Some, I think all of them, are doing it for political mileage. That if I oppose this, I'll come up a better leader, a stronger leader, and in terms of voting, I or my wing of politics will, 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 will get capital. Secondly, it is, if you come up with your people to run Mumias, for example, you have eaten from them. I want to oppose that so that I can bring other people on board. I eat with them. It is all foolish. All right. And we must deal with this as a country. You know, when you see me passion, passionate, I really, it's coming from me, that this country cannot sustain this kind of stupidity for long. How can right. you meet targets when you are stealing left, right? How can you meet target when you, every day you put on a tie to go to the office? It's not to work, <laughs> to look for <laughs> opportunity to steal. Yeah. How can you meet targets? Every Kenyan they put on a tie to go to office, not to work for Kenyans, to conceal but their to thieving. look for loopholes, to look for ways and schemes of stealing and, and, and making money. In as much as there exists a sugar directorate in Kenya, Kenya's sugar industry continues to be sent into its deathbed. Now the ripple effect is now being felt by the Kenyan sugar farmers. How best can we address their misfortunes? My name is Richard Mwenja. That forms the basis of our conversation today here on Business Glide. Always a pleasure to have you on yet another edition of this show that we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya's economy. And now to delve into this subject is none other than Haman Manyora, Kenya's most sought after political analyst and renowned public scholar in Eastern and Central Africa. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. You literally had to wear your brand today. Yes, Manyora, yeah. I, I, yes. I actually should now understand that I'm working with a big person. Of course. All right. Count yourself lucky. <laughs> <laughs> You've said you cannot protect the humble pie. No. I see. Yes. All right, sir, we are talking matters uh, Kenya's sugar industry. And uh, from where you sit, I know you are aware of what the Kenyan farmers are going through in terms of misfortunes. But let's try and trace the order of this problem. We've seen a number of Kenyans leading the conversation that uh, we are at this point because we allowed excessive smuggling of sugar into the country and predominantly from Uganda, just across here. Now, if you're talking about issues to do with smuggling, the first person or the enemy that we should slay the first. Are we looking at the issue about dishonesty and not uh, well performance of our border patrol unit? Or we are talking about the general uh, integrity issues around our border post, predominantly that in Busia and uh, Bungoma? I think it's bigger than that. First of all, bigger in the sense that there are many problems uh, that uh, make sugar, uh, the sugar industry uh, not viable. But even in terms of the border, I don't think it's a question of our scaries on the border. It's a bigger thing. Because you see, we have issues of, for example, of, uh, imports that, are, that come in legally. Uh, you know, we have commerce also. We have through Uganda. All you need is a certificate of origin, uh, which is being violated. You don't expect that to be done by an Ascari on the border. You know, the big players. Yeah, the director of sugar industry. Yeah, they are the big players. And cabs. Who do not uh, look at this issue of certificate of origin so that it can be Brazilian sugar brought through Uganda, entering Kenya. Uh, there are so many challenges. All right. Yeah. Uh, in the same breath, do you say now the ripple effect being fed by the Kenyan farmers is that of a, a thorn that is too deep into the flesh of Kenyan farmers? How much is the damage to the Kenyan sugar farmer from where you stand? It's total. Uh, in my honest opinion, it's not easy to resurrect the sugar industry. I think it is more a question of completely abandoning it and doing something different. You may want to go the Wajakoya way of <laughs> growing marijuana, mm -hmm. but that's on a lighter note. I don't think sugarcane, as traditionally understood, the sugar industry, as traditionally understood, I don't think it's a viable venture anymore. Anymore. Let's go to let's go to Mumias. First, the soils have been depleted. But even if you could use fertilizer to mitigate that, the land holding 
The farmer who in 1974-75, when this thing started in Mumia, had 10, 15 acres under sugar cultivation, has since subdivided his land to his children, who have since subdivided their children. Digital children. Yeah. And now, the maximum each of them can put under sugar cultivation is one acre, two acres, half an acre. So even in terms of land holding alone, I hadn't thought about this until somebody, I wish I could remember who it was. Eh? Even the land holding itself is not enough for sugar production. You might say, okay, let's go where there is excess land like Tana River. Then again, you are going to face challenges of husbandry. What we get from a hectare of sugar plantation and what Madagascar may get from a hectare are worlds apart. You need to grow 20 acres of land of sugar cane to get what somebody in Madagascar can get from one and a half acres or two acres. Others are pro alternative to sugar cane. You know, we are talking about Brazil and uh, beets, whatever. You know, so the challenge, I think, is beyond. All right, sir. Beyond Let's advance money. this conversation. Now that we are talking about how best we can revive the sector and if it, if it will be viable uh, enough uh, one more time, we saw President uh, Kenyatta in 2018, around 2019, establish a sugar tax fo task force that was actually chaired by Governor Weekly for Paranya. We saw Anyang Nyong was also a board member of the sugar tax task force. And their topmost recommendation was privatization of the sugar industry. The state-owned uh, mills, that they should go under privatization just to improve on efficiency and also to ramp up production so that we can meet the local demand and uh, see uh, if whether sugar prices can go down and be affordable to the Kenyans. With regards to uh, going into that particular recommendation, we've seen the government has leased uh, Mumia's sugar uh, under a 20-year lease to Sarai Group. A number of also some other state-owned mills are uh, underway with regards to leasing and so forth. Will you say now this is the silver bullet that will address the sugar crisis in Kenya in terms of efficiency and ramping up production? It's not a bullet, leave alone silver. You see, <laughs> when you hear privatization, just know one thing, mm -hmm. people want to eat. It's very simple. Because there was a time they wanted to, <laughs> this is a very interesting story. They wanted to private as uh, Kenya Re. The amount of money that was being put on the table was far, far less than the value of the, the insurance table. plaza. Before you go to an university, you know, this country is crazy. If you look at the amount of money that was given to Kenyans, Grand Regency, or pan or pan paper. You just love. You just love pan paper, the land alone where it sits and its property elsewhere, like in Nairobi, whatever it is. My friend, yeah, can you sell pan paper for 900 million, for example? Despicable. So when you hear privatization, telecom, just know guys want to have a kill. Come on. They are happy. They are going to make bills. How much did we sell telecom? How much? My friend, this is, this is a rotten country. Come and on. unless you get people like Manyora to change this country, we are headed for collapse. Even before you get to the point of getting Manyora on board, yes. the president, this is a panel that, that task force that was said... It was just a joke. That was just a joke. That was a task force full of think tanks. Oh, that was that just the president had so much they, confidence so what did in. they do? Have they sorted the problems of Mias sugar? in fact, now? Have they? Not really. Actually, Because you can bring somebody on, on board and they can give you a few coins. What are, what are the farmers saying? A different narrative. Government can throw in 3 billion, 2 billion. How much are farmers owed? What is the state of machinery and buildings in that place? How sure are you that person will not merely package sugar from other countries? How sure are you? When we sold pan paper, we were saying people are going to revive it. Have they revived it? Not really. The rumor, rumors has it that it's where sugar is packaged, for example. I'm not so sure. But it, I've never he had it roaring again. I, I didn't even support it in the first place. I don't think you need pan paper in the state in which it was. You need to turn Webuya into a timber industry town, into a timber town, processing the trees that pan paper was doing for pi timber products, wood products, and getting serious wood from DRC. That's right. my thinking. All right, sir. 
yeah. in the same breath, actually, you've talked about the issue of probably rebugging. Actually, Kenyans have gone on board, especially in the Twitter space, and uh, they are teaming up with the farmers and saying what these uh, private farms are doing actually now is rebugging. They smuggle cheap sugar into the country, Simple. they rebug it and send. How true is this narrative? Could it be happening? It has, it's been, a there. Case of foul play. It has been there from the times of I don't want to mention people. You see Mumia sugar, but it's not, it's not Kenyan sugar. It's Owners of the meal, uh, of the meals, uh, the likes of rye. It and is, I'm telling you, it is a completely rotten thing. You can't solve like this problem. All right. Every year you hear factories have closed for, for maintenance. Why must all of them close at the same time? Every year you hear shortage. How sure are you that the shortage we have at that particular time to allow people? Once you just open the importation of sugar under special conditions, just know that a handful of Kenyans are just making billions, clean money. At the expense of the fortunes so of sugar, Kenyan farmers. So sugar to me is, is something we should not even think about. Let's, let's look up something else. All right. Sugar, forget about it. Think of something else. I see. Uh, now that as a country are facing and trying to address the issue of tax evasion and Kenya Revenue Authority is trying to stamp its authority in terms of curbing people who are undertaking this dark tunnel of graft, we are still questioning the integrity of our KRA officials at the customs. Uh, we, we're getting these uh, sugar imports into the country. We're also getting some from Uganda at our borders points. We have KRA agents there. We have the officers there. Now that we are still decrying the issue of tax evasion and so forth, could the enemy that we are fighting be amongst ourselves and particularly now ar ar around our customs office? Do not blame KRA personnel. People who work for KRA are Kenyans. <laughs> Give a Kenyan half a chance and he will steal. So we must deal with the idea the Kenyan stealing. Mentality, mindset. Yes. Why? There are so many things you will have to deal with to make Kenyans move away from stealing and be a society of values. You know, why do people steal? Poor salaries, medical, housing, High education, education all these things we must deal with them so that so that the, the, the motivation, the reason for stealing, even if it's an excuse, is, becomes less. Okay? The love for money in this country. The harambes which we must outlaw. That the fact that between Richard and Manyora, people will come for Richard when, even when they know this is a young man, he left school five years, barely five years ago. The money is splashing around and he works with care. He has stolen from our taxes. So you must deal with a lot of things. It's not just saying KRA people, they steal. No, they are Kenyans, and Kenyans will still give half a chance. All right. Yeah. Sticking to that context, uh, are you trying to signal or try to convince Kenyans that KRA has over time come and uh, decried they cannot meet the ambitious uh, tax collection targets that they set each year? Now, with uh, addressing such issues such as the smuggling issue, the integrity of uh, the customs office at, at our borders and so forth, if they tighten, tighten these loopholes, perhaps we can end the issue of not, them not meeting their targets each year. How now, can, you, how can uh, you meet targets when you are stealing left, right? How can you meet targets when you, every day you put on a tie to go to the office? It's not to work, <laughs> to look for <laughs> opportunity to steal. Yeah. How can you meet targets? Every Kenyan they put on a tie to go to office, not to work for Kenyans, to conceal but to thieving. look for loopholes, to look for ways and schemes of stealing and, and, and making money. All right. And we celebrate such thieves. You can't meet your targets when everybody there is a thief. So KRA has Let them come here and challenge me. KRA has an I'll take the first person to the Kwako. You've been earning 80,000 or 120. Life Where do you stay? Unaka Karen. One of these in Wajinga. You think we also don't want to stay in Karen? Why are, we, why are you not there? Because we have not worked with KRA. Not that because we are good. I don't want to think we are good. It's just that maybe we too don't have opportunities. But we must address this issue so that we save Mother Kenya. Also, all right. Uh, we've seen in the recent past Western leaders, especially Cleophas Malala, uh, Oparanya and uh, Governor Hospital Jamong have been uh, quite vocal on the issue of sugar, of the sugar misfortunes. Now, Aden Duale was also part of the conversation around the sugar industry. He was actually blaming some of the males and Western leaders, uh, Western uh, part of Kenya leaders and so forth. How much of a threat is, is it uh, police, uh, politicizing the sugar uh, menace in this country? And uh, what threat can it be to a prospective investor who is probably looking at us from a distance and wants to invest into the Kenyan sugar industry? We keep scared away, away serious investors <laughs> because the ones you bring in, on board are crooks we can eat with.
So even there's somebody who has an idea of how to revive Mumias, he cannot compete the crookish investor who is able to go to bed with the Kenyans, the Kenyan leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of politics, in terms of the players, Malala on one side, Kinoparanya, and I'm not talking about them. I'm just saying there are different players looking at this thing differently. Different comes from Western. Some, I think all of them, are doing it for political mileage. That if I oppose this, I'll come up a better leader, a stronger leader, and in terms of voting, I or my wing of politics will, 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 will get capital. Secondly, it is, if you come up with your people to run Mumias, for example, you have written from them, well, I want to oppose that so that I can bring other people on board, I eat with them. It is all foolish. All right. And we must deal with this as a country. You know, when you see me passion, passionate, I really, it's coming from me, that this country cannot sustain this kind of stupidity for long. The country will collapse. I see. Yeah. For state-owned uh, sugar mills that are facing the brunt of collapse in the near future, should the current trajectory proceed, uh, do you see that if the government chips in in terms of bailout, perhaps it could be a revolutionary turn for the Kenyan sugar industry? The, the, the way, same way we've done with KQ, the government has tried to bail it out several times, Kenya Point Lighting Company, so forth. Can we now advance this conversation and probably take on uh, bailing out our state-owned uh, sugar mills so that we give hope to a farmer in Chemili, or Mhoroni, and so forth? I'm happy you have mentioned uh, KQ. Every time they have been bailed, what have they done? Nothing. They continue stealing and eating. Kenya power. The government bailout don't help in this context where everybody is a thief. Everybody wants to think. You send money to Mumias. The moment the money lands, you would think they would think of the poor farmer who has not been paid for years. Instead, they divide among themselves. Oh, I offer these services. Oh, this and this. The money is... It is useless, and we must stop this. All right, sir. Yes. For us as a country, now that we are facing uh, the, uh, the misfortunes that our Kenyan sugar industry cannot contribute substantively to a gross domestic product, would you say as a country it's, uh, time is ripe enough for us to rethink perhaps of a, a new business model and consolidate our efforts, perhaps even at the East African community level, so that we make sure that sugar from East Africa, not just from Kenya, is of profit to the farmers and actually we are the people exporting to the world not importing i don't think we can export sugar the people will be competing and with are people who produce sugar so cheaply brazil the cost of producing sugar here you can't compete <laughs> you can't sell even a drop a grain of sugar outside here because the people you'll be competing with their cost of production is so low <laughs> sugar here is about a hundred and something 150 per kilo yes if sugar were to come from Brazil, it could cost 10 shillings here. Or, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but maybe 30, 40 shillings. Yeah. How can you compete with them? That's why we have those tariffs. That's why we are not even willing to allow commercial sugar. Every time the commercial thing is due, we want to push it. To push it further. Because we can't compete. If commercial day. sugar were to come here, you'll close all your factories. And not just that. Maize, milk. There isn't anything we can compete our high value at, a, crops. at an international level. All right. Everything we produce, it is grossly exaggerated in terms of the cost. It is laden with theft, mismanagement. You, you know, everything negative you can think of. To that extent, we cannot have our sugar competing in the international market. We cannot allow in commercial sugar because it cannot, we cannot compete with commercial sugar. So that's my argument is, let's look for alternatives and do away with sugar farming. All right. Much as looking for alternatives might be a Herculean task for Kenyans, perhaps we probably we can go the route of uh, probably importing technology and probably subsidizing uh, the cost of uh, sugar production in the country. Do you signal that? No, I don't think. I don't think. You, you know they say when your losses are continuous, just, just leave. Park and live. Park and live and do something else. All the right. people in, in Mumias, we look at the acreage, we look at land ownership, we look at land tenure, we look at the sizes of land in Mumias and thereabouts, Zoya Sugar uh, Catchment Area. Yeah. We look at those uh, Ramisi, we look at Miwani, yeah. and we say, under the current circumstances, with this land holding, with this, this tenure system, what is it we can do so that our farmers in these areas can engage in economic activities 
with their land as it is now for their benefit and the benefit of their children and, and so that their livelihoods are improved. I keep saying all we need to do is think, think and think and we shall find a way out for the sugarcane farmer in Mumias and elsewhere. But to try whipping a dead horse is a waste of time. All right, the very last, sir. You are a senior citizen in this country and you definitely have a role to inspire the nation in some way, especially through a platform like this. For a widow in Miwani or for an orphan in Mumias there who has been largely depending on uh, feeding the family from uh, the sugar, what is, uh, he or she is reaping from uh, cultivating sugar and so forth, with the current things that are going on within the sector, what does the future, uh, the future portend for such a family? And perhaps what will be adv your advice to such a household? The future is, looks gloom, gloomy, <laughs> things look bad, but they say it's going to be light just bef after the darkest hour. What I'm saying is this, we have to count our losses, cut them and move off, move right. on. We have to stop sugar production. But before we do that, let's think of what else those people can do to improve their livelihoods, period. There's nothing else. Forget about sugarcane. What can they do under the circumstances that is sustainable, long lasting and economically viable? That's what we need to do. Let's think. For example, I come from a place when, where, where you, to get a person with an acre of land is impossible. But everybody continues to plant maize. Then they harvest 20, 30 kilos of maize. Why can't people tell them this is not economically viable? Stop maize, do hold culture. You are just next to Kisumu. Why don't you do hold culture? Where you get one bag of maize, if you are lucky, that will, that will sell at 3,000 shillings. You can Plant Kunde, and within one year you can get 50,000 from the All same right. space. So the same must be said of sugarcane farmers. Could that light that you are talking about for such families be the one that is looming by come the 9th of August this year in terms of the decision they'll make for that person who will lead them at the county level correct. and at the national level? Correct, correct, correct. This MCA, your MP, your senator, your governor is the person to determine whether or not you'll collapse under the weight of poverty. I see. Yes. That's why we wrap up this conversation touching on matters sugar industry in Kenya, the misfortunes that the sector has been facing this far, and also that in as much as we have the sugar directorate in Kenya, how much of an effort have they made with regards to responding to the cry of the Kenyan sugar farmer? If they have made uh, some efforts, uh, perhaps it hasn't been felt as much on the ground, but we are hoping that better days and brighter days are ahead for the Kenyan sugar farmer. Those are the words of our very own renowned public scholar, Haman Manyora, sending signals of hope to the Kenyan sugar farmer, but also saying that it is time as a country we be ready and steady and in as much as we are wish hoping for the best we also prepare for the worst in with regards to uh, uh, the sugar industry fortunes in this country our fan of the week is one uh, young economist based in geneva uh, from here in kenya majune socrates at the world trade organization headquarters majune socrates majune socrates thank you very much for being a member of this family we value you so much Absolutely. Uh, it should also matter to you that Majune Socrates is a tutorial fellow at the University of Nairobi. Of course, following the footsteps of our senior citizens and lecturers like Haman Manyora. So we are really thank proud you. that you are mentoring people also. Thank you, thank you. And they are contributing to the thank agenda you, about you, the economy you. of the Kenya. Up next, the Business Glide uh, African proverb of the day that you should be posted on. And also remember to advance this conversation on Twitter at Amat Mwenje Richard, at H Manyora as well. Keep the conversation going. Until next time, God bless. See you then.